these are extra tent pegs. These are my own. They did not come with the package. I'll show you what I'm going to do with them in a little while. Also, the string that they uh, provide you with this kit is black and silver, and it's very hard to see. So I went and bought some green pair of uh, green pink paracord for the tent tie downs, and I'll show you the difference in them also later on. The rest of the tent, the rest of the package is what came with the tent. Tent poles have their own bag. This is your waterproof fly that covers the tent for weather uh, weatherproofing rain. You can see the difference in the color here. It's black and white versus the pink paracord. I'm hoping that this will stand out better to keep people from tripping over the tent, keep visitors from tripping over, and keep myself from tripping over as well. Okay, there's the tent. It's got strings wrapped around it to hold it in a roll. So it can roll up inside the bag. You also have tent pegs here in another bag. And it's got instructions sewn in if you need to read the instructions. So you need to find yourself a level place to put your tent up. This is in my backyard. It's about 50 degrees out here. And Sunshiny with probably a light five mile an hour southerly breeze, so it's not very windy today. It's scheduled to get windy and rainy tonight, so I want to test the uh, tent in the wind and the rain before we hit the road with it. One thing I did when I rolled it back up is I had a lot of the windows closed and that helps. Well, it keeps the air trapped inside the tent when you're trying to roll it up. So the manufacturer suggests that the windows be left open as you're rolling it up to make it easier to get a tight, compact roll on it. So you can see I've laid out my tent and now I'm going to start Assembling my pole. Comes in a bag. That, these are uh, expandable, supposed to be fiberglass poles. I think they're actually fiber, uh, aluminum, but they are expandable. So they have these, uh, it's a tensioner inside of it that keeps it in one unit. So you have three segments. It disassembles very quickly and folds up, but it also reassembles very quickly as well. No confusion about what fits with what. Seems to be the in industry standard now. <clears throat> all right, I've got all my tent poles laid out. You've also got four elbows here. They're plastic elbows. They have a different size on each side so it's really hard to get them confused as well the poles you have two really really long ones and they are paired together they go across the main portion then you have a short bow this is probably fiberglass actually and it goes across the front opening on the porch area
Now, this is what I was alluding to earlier with the tent poles, pegs, is they give you about five of these and, I don't know, about ten of these to hold the tent down. These go in fairly easily, but they twist. When they twist, the tent comes unhooked. These are far more superior, and you need a lot of these, and you need to get rid of these. These are good for temporary use, but they're not good for permanent use. Now, I do, from a previous tent or awning or something, I have the extra long ones already had, but I may wind up having to get more of these. These are easier to put in, obviously, than these. Sometimes you don't need these. Are quite, don't need these. These are quite a bit of overkill here. Okay, now you can see I've got the main part of the tent assembled. It looks like I didn't tie this string to the crossbows up here. It kind of keeps them together and centered. I'll have to remember to do that next time. I'm not going to take it down just to tie the strings. But it'll probably help it with rigidity. You can see the strings up here that are flopping around. Um, you can see in the ground where I've put the yellow pegs that hold the tent up. Now, I use these wire ones, the, the, the silver ones. You can see i got a yellow one here holding the the pole down, holding the tent down on the pole. The, the tent will ride up the pole with the wind if you don't put something down here in this ring to keep it in the ground. In this case, I used one of the wire ones, uh, but it's being supported by a yellow peg here and a yellow peg here. So that may be sufficient on that corner. Um, again, I've got a yellow peg here and a silver pin holding the tent pole there. Um, and then this part here that's still down is the porch area. We'll be putting it up in just a second. You can see how the tent also hooks onto the elbows right here. Keeps it pulled out and keeps it open. On the top, you can see that it's got a screen. It's screened in all the way around. I've got windows on each side. Right now they're closed. And they're screened in also. And I've got a large round zipper door that is closed now, it allows access from the main room to the porch area the screened in porch area so the zipper door is not screened but it's inside of a screened in area All right, so you can see the assembled tent. You can see the mixture of the wire pegs and the yellow pegs in the ground, screened in windows, the ventilation flap at the back, screened in on this side, screened in porch area. You see I've got the wire peg uh, inside the ring there to hold the tent down on the peg and Got the screened in porch area. I'm going to go ahead and show you the inside before I put the fly on The fly is brown and it makes it look darker in here. Of course um, You've got screen in window On each side This is the porch area So that's on one side and then you have the screened-in window on the other side and the screened-in 
roof. There is no zipper to close the screened-in window. Screen-in roof, but you can close the screened-in sides. Okay, then you have the round zipper door here. The zipper goes almost all the way around. So far, but it's only been limited use. The zipper has not gotten to where I can't use it. it hasn't hung up. Looks like we've got a little bit of twist in the tent by looking at the floor. I'm thinking this pole over here is in the wrong location. We'll probably have to move it a little bit. Uh, here's our zippered windows. We have a pouch here for storage. We also have a pouch here that for storage and we have a an awning all right I just installed the fly the waterproof waterproof fly over the top of the tent this keeps the rain out of course <clears throat> you can see a few things about it the ends the corners of it have these elastic loops with um, a hook a plastic hook that hooks into the ring on the tent pole it also has a piece of velcro here that loops around the tent pole it goes over the elbow and it has a gap here and a gap on top that allows for airflow a gap here and a gap on top that allows for airflow and to get the airflow to flow through you can open up this floor vent and it will allow air to flow through all right now here's the strings that I was, uh, I was talking about these are the guy strings that you're supposed to put in the ground but this black and white or black and silver is very difficult to see even during the day and it's especially difficult at night even with a flashlight you're not looking for it so I'm going to replace those strings with the pink paracord they make the orange, the yellow, something that will stand out and help people from tripping over and killing themselves whenever they're coming to the tent. All right, there you have it. The pink lines, you can see those. They stand out pretty well. The fly is tight. Now for mine, it helps with orientation. I, I found the brand name here fits in this spot. So... When I'm wrestling with this big brown fly, I'm always looking to where that brand name is. That's where it's going to sit, and that's where it's going to help me put it on correctly. As you can see in the front, they've got the pink strings, and they kind of stand out a little bit more than the, uh, the black and white ones did. Now the plan is to zip up the windows and the doors and let this thing sit for several days hopefully through rain and wind to see how much it's going to be able to take so we plan on staying in it for a week and we want to know that it's going to be able to hold up to pretty much whatever's out there what we expect and that's no more than about 20 mile an hour winds but some rain and we want to know if it's got any uh, water leaks in it okay i've got the tent assembled i put some things in it i wanted to show you the layout of the tent you can see how I've got a power cord going to it. We have several electrical appliances that we run inside of our tent. And so we have a microwave, a hot plate, and a uh, refrigerator, a small Coleman refrigerator. And so I had to cut an access port into the floor right here. And I wrap, I put a square of duct tape around it so that the hole won't enlarge. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side as soon as I disassemble the tent, which is not right now, I have a very heavy duty uh, electric extension cord and a power strip, which powers up these three things as well as I have a hole in the wall here and I wrapped it around with duct tape on both sides so the hole won't enlarge to power the uh, electric heater. We may run into some cool weather uh, at our camping spot coming up and we may need the heater I don't know uh, it's not something I think I would leave on at night 
but I can get it in the 70s in this room with everything sealed up. We also have our uh, twin mattress, and it's a gel foam mattress. We have a little uh, deck in the back of a car, or our RAV4, and we also use it back there as well. But if we can, it's kind of cramped in the car, but we can use it if we need to. Uh, but it's a little bit more room in the tent. So we still have room for our clothes, storage of food, uh, preparation of food, things like that in here. We could power our computers off the power strip and uh, uh, alarm clock or radio or whatever else, TV, whatever else, whatever else we wanted to run in this tent. It's an eight person tent, but the two of us with all of this stuff it's pretty comfy, and uh, I think we're going to enjoy our 